over this now. You, you even had, you even had uh, like 15, 14. We're talking about tiebreaker in the Liverpool match. Soccer. In it the League Cup. It's very important. Too, and by the way, no, but let him go ahead and gloat about yesterday. I was told that I'm coming here to discuss the Manchester City win yesterday. No, <laughs> you are so <laughs> not. And here with us now, United Arab Emirates and the U.S. Youssef Al Oteba. Very good, Dad. You know, Eamon's a big soccer player. Yeah, but it's not Man City. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm Ahli, which is a local Egyptian team. That's my team. Oh, really? That's my team too. All right. Very good. So, uh, Eamon was just talking about the the changing face of the Middle East. You you actually the UAE has not only changing face of fighter pilots. I mean UAE. I mean you guys have been out front from the very beginning here, saying, "Hey, U.S., you don't have to go it alone." But now you have a female pilot that actually was dropping bombs on ISIS. It's funny, I got a lot of emails yesterday about the story and uh, I finally got the approval. So here it goes on Morning Joe. I can officially confirm that the UAE strike mission on Monday night was led by a female fighter pilot, Maryam al-Mansouri. Um, she is fully qualified, highly trained, uh, combat ready pilot, and she led the mission. Mm. Actually, a funny story is uh, the UA US uh, tanker pilots called in for air refueling and asked for the UAE mission. And when they heard a female voice on the other <laughs> side, they actually paused for about 20 seconds. There was a radio sign. Like, there she is! I love it. She's 35 years old. Um, she actually has an undergraduate degree in English literature, was among the first women to join the UAE Air Force Academy when it finally allowed female members. She graduated in 2008, and there she is. Eamon, you were That's talking amazing. about how crazy this is. That in crazy in a good way. History. Yeah, in a good yeah, way. Yeah. I, I, I mean, for oh no, so I many thought you reasons. were siding with that. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but in some countries, Amy was just saying, in some countries, women can't drive. You guys are like putting them in charge of fighting missions. But I think the be. whole the whole campaign and coalition on ISIS and and extremists in general boils down to ultimately this. Do you want a model or a society that allows women to become ministers in government, female fighter pilots, business executives, artists? Or do you want a society where if a woman doesn't cover up in public, she's beaten or she's lashed or she's raped? I mean, this is ultimately what this breaks down to. And as I watched the debate over the last few weeks over, you know, what Arab states are going to step in. Right. I think it's important for us moderate Arabs, moderate Muslims to step up and say, this is a threat against us. This is more of a threat against us than it is against you. This right. is not just a threat to our countries. This is a threat to our way of life. Willie? And, and Youssef, why is it so significant? I mean, you look at, you know, the UAE and, and on women's rights. Um, and then you look, you're talking about ISIS, but it's not just ISIS, it's, it's our allies. It's Saudi Arabia that treats women this way and they can't drive, as Eamon points out. Um, why has it taken so long to get there for other countries longer than it has for the UAE? I think it's different. Some countries have some different views and different societies and, and some of our friends in the region tend to be a little more conservative. Uh, we take a slightly more open-minded, pragmatic view. And I'm not trying to, you know, to be derogatory, but we have a very open-minded young leadership in the UAE. And again, if I go back to ISIS, uh, I think moderate Arab countries need to step up and say more and do more. I've heard a lot of comments. Uh, one of them was, there is no such thing as moderate Islam. There is no such thing as moderate Muslims. Yeah. You know what? You're looking you guys at are, yeah, I was just saying, you guys are proving that what? to be false. And, and Maryam is another moderate Muslim. So I, I, I find that <clears> argument <throat> offensive. There's a lot of us. Granted, we need to do more. We need right. to say more. But it, if anything, the U.S. just joined our coalition against extremists. Okay. This is not the U.S. coalition. This is moderate Arab Amen. coalition. It's about time, yes. right? What about it's doing about more? time. Uh, in the fight against I'm, ISIS, how much support um, do you think the Arab countries especially are going to be able to bring to the table? We will bring whatever is necessary to defeat ISIS. And I want to say something that I think very few people know. This campaign against ISIS, this is actually our sixth coalition with the United States. In the last 24 years, starting with Desert Storm in 1990, Somalia, Kosovo, Afghanistan, Libya, and now ISIS. This is the UAE's sixth coalition it's with awesome. the United States. Yeah. We're the only Arab country to be in that position. So I don't think it's a question of which or what Arab countries will step up. We will, but you can't do this without us, and we can't do this without you. I love it. All right, and absolutely, Al Thank you. It's always great to see you. All right, and listen. Thank you so much for coming.
And being such a good guest, I'm going to leave you with rice around the San Francisco <laughs> treat and a Liverpool soccer mug. <laughs> you can't have it. You have your Man City stuff. I get arrested if I take this back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Appreciate it.